I think it brings up a really good point because the sovereignty is a big deal for, especially for governments and government contractors, but anyone who's working with sensitive information, they care about where the information is stored, but the, the encryption and the security protocols behind it is really interesting because there's what sounds to be, or what seems to be a false or faulty perception that because it's a SaaS solution, that SaaS software provider must be providing world-class security that you don't need to worry about. Well, in this case, it sounds like they do need to worry about it because it's not meeting their their cybersecurity needs and the encryption standards that they're looking for. And so you've got to figure out not only where the workflows reside, but just what systems you're going to use in the cloud, what systems and data do you feel comfortable hosting in the cloud, especially if it's outside your country or if it's in another country versus information that maybe isn't as sensitive that you can be a little more flexible with the type of provider that you are considering. So I think it's just a good reminder, if anything, this should be a good takeaway or a good reminder to organizations that even the biggest hyperscalers in the world or the biggest cloud software providers in the world aren't necessarily gonna provide the cybersecurity protocols you need. They're not necessarily gonna provide the data sovereignty you're gonna need. They're not necessarily gonna provide the, the uh, workflows and capabilities that you need. And so just like any software technology decision, you just need to fully understand your risks and the trade-offs when you go into the purchasing decision, as well as when you make the implementation as well.